Hi, honey. I'm home. John is filmed in front of a live studio audience. Oh, wonderful, Mr. Seidman. It's moments like these that makes a teacher's life worthwhile. Complete this quote. Ask not for whom the bell tolls. Answer. I just hope it tolls soon so that I can get out of this class. <laughs> Very amusing, Mr. Seidman. You get an F for funny. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm not dressed. John, we were married for ten years. I've seen you undressed. It's no big deal. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, just a minute. talk to you. Yeah, just a second. Let me take care of something. <laughs> well, it's really great to see you. Apparently. No, I was, I was ironing these when you rang the bell. You know, it helps if you take them off first. Thanks for the tip. What are you doing here, anyway? Who's with our son? Oh, Mike took Matthew to the movies. John, Mike and I have a problem. Oh. Now, we tried to solve this ourselves, but we can't. Oh, great. Now I have to play Dear Abby for my ex-wife and her boyfriend. He seems so withdrawn and moody. I'm really worried about him. I can't seem to say or do anything right. And every no. time I try talking to him, he just clams up. My, my, how upsetting. Would you be serious? Be serious huh? now. This is important. Last night... Mm hmm Well, he wet the bed. <laughs> Mike wet the bed? What, was he drunk? Not Mike. I'm talking about our son. Matthew? Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's wrong with Matthew? I don't know. I don't know. I even tried checking with his teacher, but she doesn't have a clue either. What? Except that his mood begins to get sour as the weekend approaches. Now, if anything, a child Matt's age should be looking forward to the weekend. Well, of course he should. He sees me on the weekend. <laughs> yes. Well, no offense, John, but I was wondering if maybe you should skip seeing Matt for the next few weeks. What? What, what are you... what are you talking about? Are you saying it's me? Well, Mike and I don't know what else it could be. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what else it could be. It could be that he spent six full days with Mike. I spent six minutes with that guy, and I'm depressed for the whole week. <laughs> Look, John, if you're going to be defensive about this... Yes, you no bet I'm going to be defensive. You tell me I can't see my son? That's absolutely unacceptable. It's not that he should see less of me. He should see more of me. Look, Wendy, Matt and I have great times together. I mean, uh, we're like buddies. We play football every Sunday. You know how he loves to play football. John, look, I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm only thinking of Matt. Well, so am I. Well, I'll tell you what. This weekend, I'll, um... Uh, I'll sit him down, we'll have a nice long talk, and maybe I can find out what's bothering him. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, believe me, if you can get to the bottom of this thing, oh, nothing would make me happier. Hey, listen, you know, when it comes to raising Matthew, we're in this together. 
And we always will be. You know, I can't help thinking that things would be a lot easier on Matthew if we hadn't split up, huh? Well, don't worry about it. I'll, uh, I'll see if I can't find out what's bothering him. Thanks. Oh, John. Huh? I just wish there was something I could do for you. Huh. <laughs> Take off your pants. Wendy, I've got a meeting to go to in 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you don't think I'm going to let you go out with your crease looking like that, do you? <laughs> Come on. Come on, fork them over. <laughs> It's the summer of 69. I get a call from my commanding officer. He wants me to parachute into Hanoi. Hold it, hold it. Now, last week you told us that in the summer of 69, you were in Woodstock. Right. That's where he called me. <laughs> now, apparently what had happened was Excuse I was... Excuse me for interrupting, dear, but it's not immediately apparent how any of this pertains to the breakup of your marriage. He was probably in the middle of this story when his wife left him. <laughs> John, please. So I parachute in. The rice paddy is a burning Kirk, lake in the Kirk, Kirk, dear. <laughs> You've kept us spellbound now for what seems like most of our lives. <laughs> Before tonight's session ends, I think it's only fair that someone else have a chance to talk. <laughs> All right, then. Don't be afraid to jump in. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Yes, Ralph! I forgot to take a pin out of this shirt. <laughs> Oh, yes, John, please. Uh, well, uh, this is really a very personal thing. I've never talked about this before because I always felt that my kid's my business. You have a child? What? Yeah, a son, Matthew. Oh, Hello. Oh, he'll be nine next week. Aww. Well, uh, mm. it turns out that Matthew's been kind of moping around lately, and my wife told me that it was me who was depressing him. I never would have brought this up, but I, I, I feel like I really need help on this one. I, I don't know, I'm just lost. Oh, John, how awful to have to hear that. It must break your heart. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Red. Oh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm lost and depressed, too. You know? Because of the kids and the doggies and the flowers Kirk, and the birdies, you know. Kirk, I am expressing a simple human emotion. Don't try to make it out to be something it's not. What are you talking about? He's got his head right on your things, then. <laughs> he wiggles his ears, you're into foreplay. <laughs> Forget it, Kirk. You would never understand. Well, thanks what? anyway. Am I you're what? welcome. <clears throat> what do you think the problem is with your son, John? I really don't know. But I think I'd better get it straightened out before this weekend because he's got a birthday party on Friday and I'd hate to see him not enjoy himself at his own party. You know, I... I thought I might do something special for his party. I know the very thing. A man I used to date is a clown. I think I went out with him too. <laughs> I mean, an actual clown. He entertains at a lot of children's functions. I'm sure he'd be ideal for Matthew's party. What do you think? Oh, wow, a clown. Now, that would be great. I'll give you his number. Oh, thanks. He goes by the name of Bofu the Clown. You give him that name, Louise? <laughs> Mac, one super yucky cone. No, Dad, it's called a super lucky cone. Well, I knew it was something like that. Come here, you. Oh, you got a birthday coming up in a few days, huh? I bet you're looking forward to that. Well. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Mac, have I got something great for you? I know your birthday's on Friday, but uh, you'll be opening up so many presents by then. 
What do you say we get a jump on it? Whatever you say, Dad. That's my boy. Now, what do you think is in there? How do I know? You bought it, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Have a look-see. Go ahead. Oh, boy. My father got me one of those when I was your age. Boy, I, I couldn't wait to put it on. I used to <laughs> wear it to bed and everything. Thanks, Dad. Dad, I'll be nine on Friday. Yeah, I know. So I'm not exactly a kid anymore. <laughs> That's right. So you'll understand if I don't kiss you, right? Yeah, sure, I understand. Good. Hey, man! Now that you got this new football helmet, I bet you can't wait to try it out. Not really. Sure. So what do you say, after we finish our ice cream, we uh, suit up, head down to the park, and toss the old ball around? I'm really kind of tired, Dad. Okay. Maybe change your mind later. Hmm. So how you been? Seems like ages since we've um, visited. I've been fine. Good. Fine is good. <laughs> Everything okay at school? Fine. Huh? Good. <laughs> Listen, Matt. I just want you to know that if anything's bothering you, you can talk to me, no matter what. In fact, I think you'll find that I'm a very, very good listener. Well... Yeah, what? It's just... Yeah, uh, who is it? Your John, sir! <laughs> Hey! So, uh, 20 miles into the marathon, right? It turns out the course goes right by your house. I thought this is perfect. I'll pop in, load up on some carbohydrates. Yeah, right, right, right. Hey, so, John, uh, where do you keep the macaroni and cheese? Yeah, Kirk, look, if you're, if no, you're, wait, ooh, listen, Kirk, if you're running the marathon, don't you think you ought to get back to the marathon? Relax, I got a big lead. <laughs> hey, John. Is your little kid? Yeah, uh, Matt, uh, this is Kirk. All right. Hey, any kid of John's is a friend of mine. Give me five. Don't forget your change bag. All right. If it had been yesterday, you'd have missed me. Oh, just all luck. Yeah, because I only just flew in last night. Nicaragua. Oh, come on, Kirk, please. What? Are you a flight attendant? A flight attendant? <laughs> no. But can you keep a secret? Kirk, please. No, it's all right, John. It's all right. I have a good feeling about this small person here. <laughs> he can be trusted. Matt? You happen to be looking at an authentic, bona fide, international spy. Oh, fuck. Wow, that's neat. Mm -hmm. How come you never told me you knew a spy, Dad? Well, uh, I, it, it's classified. <laughs> Anyone? Oh, lots of times. <laughs> so you got to understand, I am in the field of counter espionage, which is just a very heavy-duty word for sticking it to the commies. <laughs> Every so often, me and a bunch of guys from down at spy headquarters, we zip off to a secret location, and we practice firing missiles at each other. <laughs> oh, wow, that's so neat. Because all my dad does is teach school. <laughs> hey, even spies have to go to school, Matt. If you fire missiles at each other, how come you don't get killed? Yeah. How come? We wear special clothes. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, we better get going, Matt. Just cut Matt a new football helmet for his birthday. He's just dying to try it out, right, Matt? Oh, well, that's right. You got a birthday coming up, huh? On Friday, I'm having a party and everything. Yeah, very small party, small private party. Invitations only. Come on, Matt. Wanna come? Ooh, let's see. Wednesday, I'm in Libya. <laughs> Thursday, I got that assassination thing in town. Yeah, well, I'm sure the kids will excuse you. The kids will excuse you no, if you can't make it. Friday, I'll be there. Wow, you'd really take time off your spy stuff just to come to my party? Hey, boom. It's the kind of guy I am. This is gonna be the best party. All Jack Newfield has is some dumb clown. Look, Matt, don't you think we should get going? I mean, we better get down to the park if we're going to have some football practice. Do we have to? Or we could go over to the pond and throw stones at the model boats. All right! <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, I guess we won't need these. Wait up! Now then, has anyone got any news to report, Ralph? Have we had a breakthrough on the job front? Uh, not really. <laughs> I didn't expect to see you here tonight. Yeah, how, how did the birthday party go? It was a disaster, an unmitigated disaster. A fight broke out. Oh, I shouldn't worry about that, John. Tomorrow they'll be the best of friends. You know how children are. The children behave themselves perfectly. The fight was between two full-grown adults. That's, that's awful. Who was it? <laughs> I didn't start it. Don't talk to me. Just stay out of my sight. You invited that to your son's birthday party. No, no, I didn't. Why did you have to hit him? I told you. He sprayed water at me. That was his job. He's a clown. How was I supposed to know that? <laughs> well, didn't he have a red nose? He does now. <laughs> Apparently, Kurt failed to notice the uh, multicolored wig, the odd long shoes, the entire clown outfit. You actually punched out a clown? So what are clowns all of a sudden? An endangered species? You bashed my bosso. <laughs> Couldn't have happened at a worse time. My son Jace gave me the awful news that he didn't want to see me for the next few Sundays. Wow. Just as I was about to find out why, Buffo the Clown comes flying out of the French doors with Kirk wrapped around his throat in some kind of a Chinese death hole. That is not true, all right? It was a Korean death hole. Oh. Taekwondo. I don't know, I just feel that Matthew doesn't want to be with me anymore. Oh, John, I'm so sorry. I know this is difficult for you, John, but you know how children are. It's probably just a phase. Yeah, just give the kid a break. Lighten up. Live with it? Lighten up? Gee, I, I can't believe what I'm hearing. Neither of you would say any of these things if you had children of your own. Not so fast, John. From what I hear, there's a lot of little blonde kids running around Thailand. I wanted children, but we couldn't have any. And the last thing I need is for you to stand there and throw my husband's faulty vein in my face. Look, all I'm trying to say is that unless you've had children of your own, you couldn't possibly understand what I feel. So we didn't have children. We had a fox terrier, and that's almost the same. I remember when he uh, was just Louise, a little... Louise, Louise, yeah, with all due respect, I, a pet is hardly the same as a child. Uh, no, but I, I know what Louise means. You may remember that I had a turtle once. <laughs> They're very loving and loyal creatures. A turtle would never desert you. Ralph, a turtle can't desert you. <laughs> Where's the turtle gonna go? Oh, God, I feel so terrible. The only decent relationship I've ever had is falling apart. What are you going to do? Well, what can I do? I can't force him to be with me. It's gonna kill me, but tomorrow I'm gonna get together with my boy and I'm just gonna tell him that if he doesn't want to see me for a while, he doesn't have to. Oh, John, I, it can't possibly be good for a boy not to see his father. No, 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 that's not necessarily true, Kate. See, I've read that even if a father spends long periods away from his son, there's no reason that child can't grow up to be a, a happy, successful, self-confident, and well-adjusted individual. Where did you read that, Ralph? Postcard from my father. <laughs> Mommy didn't pick me up after my trumpet lesson. Well, I asked your mom if I could pick you up. But I need a little time to talk to you. She'll come by later. Oh, I, uh, I stopped by the hospital to see Bafo today. Oh, is he all right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's going to be fine. He's already able to sit up and take a little seltzer. <laughs> hey, Matt, uh, come here for a minute. Matt, there's something you told me yesterday at the party that kind of bothered me, and I didn't get a chance to talk to you about it. 
What do you mean? Well, you know, when you, when you asked if I'd mind not seeing you for the next few Sundays. Well, I just wanted to tell you that if that's the way you want it, it's not going to make me feel happy, but that's the way it's going to be. But what I really wanted to know is why. Can you tell me? The truth? I think so, yes. I don't like football. Okay, fine. You don't like football. Now just tell me what's worrying you. That's it. <laughs> what? You mean that's what this is all about? You don't like football? I hate football. I'm sorry, Dad. I know you always wanted me to play it, but I don't want to. So I won't blame you if you want to spend your Sundays with some kid who likes football. No, no. I don't want to spend my Sundays with anybody but you. <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> It's just that I don't like football either. <laughs> that, was, that was my father's game. He made me play it when I was a kid. Then why'd you always make me play? Because I thought you always liked it. Why did you always ask to play? Because I thought you liked it. <laughs> and that's why you didn't want to see me? I couldn't tell you. I thought it would hurt your feelings. Oh, Matt, Matt. <laughs> you know what we are? We're just a couple of real jerks. <laughs> Here we are trying not to hurt each other's feelings, and all we did was make each other feel miserable. I want to tell you something. The only way you can hurt my feelings is by not being my friend. Because you're my best friend in the whole world. Really? Really. And I bet I know who your best friend is. Yeah, from Newfield. <laughs> I was just about to say that. Yeah, there is a sport I like. It's soccer. In fact, I even joined the team. Soccer? You like soccer? That's great. Yeah, and for the next few Sundays, we're going to be playing matches at the park. All the other kids are bringing their dad with them. Do you think he can come and watch me play, too? That is, if they haven't already made plans for Sunday. Oh, you bet I'm going to come to see you play. I wouldn't miss your soccer games for anything in the world. Dad, you know what? What? I'm glad we had this talk. <laughs> Me too. Hey, how about if I make us a couple of sandwiches? You stay right here. I'll go make it. You do that for your old dad? Hey, that's the kind of guy I am. <laughs> Next on L.A. Law, Roxanne's patience is wearing thin with her lover's mind-numbing pillow talk tonight. On Saturday, it's 227. And the survey says Mary and Sandra are at it again when they play Family Feud, followed by Amen. Then, put on your blue suede shoes for the wedding of the year on the Golden Girls. After that, it's Empty Nest, Saturday.